Okay, so um, we're going to talk about inlay techniques. Um, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is de decorating the leg. And on the bottom of this piece is a what is called a spade foot. In order to do a spade foot, you have to remove some material just above and then taper both the upper and lower part of it to have it turn into a spade foot. And uh, this is a jig uh, uh, that I have on the table here. It's, it's a pretty simple jig to make. And you use a force in a bit and use it in a drill press. And, and you go ahead and, and drill that down all four sides. The important thing is that when you do that last one, you want to have some kind of support underneath, otherwise you blow it out. So what I did was I just took a dowel and flattened it, uh, put the dowel in, got it the right size, and push it in there so I wouldn't have any blow up. This is beautiful wood and you don't want to have something like that happen to it when you're machining it. It machines nice, almost as nice as it, it works with hand tools. Uh, then I tapered the inside of the leg, or the outside of the leg. I tapered the outside of the leg and I had to stop the table saw uh, right here so that it doesn't hit that edge because that's going to be turned at a cut at a different angle. The upper, the upper angle is different than the spade angle. So I had to stop it at that point. So here, here you can see where it's coming down and if I didn't stop it, it would cut into the spade at the bottom. Cut that off with a hand saw. In this particular case, uh, Japanese saw was easiest because it, it, it's nice and flat and I can continue the cut and uh, get it down into that, all the way down to the con center of the con uh, concave area. I want to make sure all the joinery is done on this piece before I go ahead and ruin uh, the, the integrity of that nice square leg. So I don't want to really do much tapering at this point. I want to get all my joinery done first. So uh, what I've done here is in this particular case, I have some dovetails up here, and then if you look really close right here, you'll see what looks like, I think another picture of it, looks like there's two tenons going in there, and there are, there's two tenons uh, right in this area here. There's a tenon there and a tenon there. Um, so this is the type of joinery that, that is very typical in, a, in, a, in this kind of a piece of furniture, any, any furniture where you, you're going to have a drawer. So this, this is the drawer runner that we're, we're talking about down here. After I get the joint, that particular joinery done, I came back using the same jig. I put the leg on there and I could cut the angles for the spade foot. And here you can see it's all lined up with the table saw and that's the way it looks when it's finished. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and, and you knock them out pretty quick. Um, the, the jig is, is uh, pretty simple, and, and this is the jig that I was talking about. Uh, this is a steam ladder jig, and uh, uh, this particular part of the jig uh, just rides on the, on the top of the table saw, and this clamps to the fence, and it squeezes up against it, and allows you to slide it back and forth. Um, very simple. The, the adjustment for uh, the angle is in, is in this sliding piece on the top and there's a little nail right down here where you jam the leg into that nail so it doesn't move and then you clamp it with your Desteco clamp to hold it in place. Sorry guys, I get to pull the pass on our hand. We'll go back to the slides again. <coughs> So we've, we've got the, the leg all shaped. As we've got some joinery done at the top of it. And uh, the next thing I want to do is, uh, I'll probably put some string inlay in it. And uh, I might go back over there in a minute, so don't run away. Um, <laughs> but the string inlay uh, is actually done uh, by putting the, the uh, Here it is. 
by, by mounting uh, the leg in, in a vise. In this particular vise, um, you might want to put this on the camera. Um, this particular vise is modified. This is a, an inlay bench that, that Steve Latta designed. And uh, uh, this, this little doohickey right here enables you to uh, put uh, an uneven surface in there and it matches up to it uh, pretty nice. Um, and then holds it nice and tight. And then with this, um, this cutter uh, allows you to set the distance from the fence to whatever distance you want to cut a straight line to inlay. Um, this, this, uh, let me see. this has three teeth on it um, and uh, it cuts a nice little groove. Uh, we, make the, we make the inlay match the cutter uh, and you can you can change that if you want to make your own cutters but this is the way this comes from Lee Nielsen and this allows you to do this straight line and then at the top of the leg that I had up there and we'll, we'll go back to it in a minute we have to put a curve so let me show you how the curve is done before uh, I don't know whether I have one on here or not yeah. I'll show you the curve, but this is the tool that we use to do it. This is the pivot point, this is the cutter, and it's adjustable, so you can go any distance you want. And uh, you will see um, on the, the one that's on the PowerPoint that I mounted it here and I just went around back and forth pivoting on a point and you'll see where the pivot point was. Uh, the pivot point is actually movable. Um, so uh, this is a very useful tool. It has little extensions that go on here so uh, you, can, you can do all kinds of decorating. And I have, I have this piece, if we can go over to the table. I have this piece that has some squirrely lines on it and that's done by using this particular tool. Um, I have a setting down here where I can put the pivot point in. I know the distance that I want. I set it at that distance and tighten it. Then I can come up here. I'll do it on this side so you can see. Then I use it to make this arc like that. And then I can go over to this side and make the arc go like that. Or we can do the, the larger arc by setting this distance and swinging it for this one right here. So you can do all kinds of things with it. This is the leg is just jammed in the jig to hold it in place. Um, and you can do all kinds of decorations. Here you can see that this particular line has been done on this leg here. And then I ran the bellflowers down the center of it. And we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, here you can see at the top what I was talking about. I have the two straight lines running down and then I've connected them by putting a little arch at the top. Now I will cut out um, a piece of string and uh, I'm not going to make you go back over there. But, but um, the, the, the string is, is cut on this board right here and, and it has a little cutter that you run back and forth. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You don't need to, you don't need to come over here. This is the cutter. We lay this on here and just run it back and forth and it cuts a little strip of veneer. Um, it's not cut all the way through so I won't break it off. But that's how we make the string. And I cut that stock on the table saw using that same fine blade. And the stock is cut out of eight quarter um, poly. Occasionally my brain passes gas and and it's caused by doing too much finishing <laughs> so I had to thank you uh, anyway uh, we'll move on here you can see down at the bottom of the picture there's the leg it's got the string inlay in it at this particular point I remembered that I needed to do some more joinery before I started doing any inlay on the leg and I thought I think I'll do all the joinery before I, I finish all this uh, inlay stuff. So I went back and uh, I added this piece right in here, which is 
through, uh, through uh, uh, tenants, top and bottom, and that is uh, to provide support for the lopers that pull out on either side to hold the top. Um, there's also a center divider for the drawers, and uh, that had to be installed. That's also uh, through tenants, top and bottom, uh, double both top and bottom. But it's also going to have a piece of pine that runs from behind it to the back board as a full divider for the two drawers. And that will be mortised into both the back of the cabinet and that center divider. So I took the center divider over and chopped a mortise in it using a mortise machine. Now, you've got, some of you guys have taken my class before and I always uh, push using hand tools. But when you have to do a long distance like this, it's a lot more accurate uh, and it doesn't take as long if you have a machine set up. Uh, I still like to do it all by hand. All these joints are cut by hand except for some of the, the mortises. Uh, just quicker, that's why. So then I bring it back and, and I put the, the pine board in. You can see some of the joinery for this top board that runs across the top of the drawers that actually holds the cabinet together and uh, uh, provides support for all, all of those pieces. And if we look at the back of the, this is with the top piece, the top rail put on. And then we look at the back of it and you can see where I mortised it through the back of the case. Uh, this is usually done with wedges. It's glued and wedged in, in, in most of the old cabinets. It's the way it was done. The next thing is the knee braces, and uh, I'm gonna go back to the table again. Uh, the knee braces uh, have a unique shape to them. They're very delicate, and uh, what I did was uh, I made copies of the plan Whenever I do a piece like this, uh, I had to blow it up because the plan was only half size that he sent me. And uh, then I make copies of it and then I can use the actual full size plan to cut out and make uh, patterns. So this is a pattern for the knee brace and I wanted to show this because I actually have one tenon on it, but I had two other tenons, but I don't show them. There was a tenon here and a tenon here. So there were three tenons on this and that provided a, a little bit of a problem on how you put it together. <laughs> Just think about it. But it's pretty simple. So this is the pattern for the knee braces. So we'll go back to the PowerPoint. This is an exercise in futility. If you ever have any questions, just holler out, because I can't see your hands or anything. Um, We've, we've, at this point, have put an angle on, on these lakes. They all have angles on them. They're tapered. So I have to take that into consideration to make these knee braces. They have to fit nice and tight. So this is how you get the angle. You use a sliding deep bevel. You get the angle and you transfer it to your stock. And if you look closely, you can see that I have uh, traced out a knee brace on here, but I've also cut all the way around this piece of half inch stock with a table saw to an eighth of an inch. I did an eighth of an inch and I did that on both sides. And I'm going to come back with uh, a little rabbit plane and I like the little Nielsen, uh, Lee Nielsen rabbit plane that they gave out tonight. I have one of those, I love it. Uh, I shaved that down all the way around so then I could go ahead and cut out my knee brace and I had stock, extra stock on the edges that I could just remove some stock and leave the tenons. Follow me? So I left three tenons on there and I, those tenons are from that area that was, was pre-cut ahead of time. And I got two knee braces out of that, one out of each corner, one of this corner, one of this corner. Um, not too worried about the grain because this particular wood has such close interlocked grain that uh, a half inch is pretty strong. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not laminated or anything. Where did you get the wood? That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours did it take Bob to make this piece of furniture? Um, it took 
four and a half months. This, uh, this is the knee brace installed. And if you look real close, there's a little pencil mark there and there, another pencil mark there and there, and a pencil mark there and there, and that tells me um, that's where the, where the tenons are. are. And uh, I hoped it would show better when I photographed it so that people would see it. But I actually do photograph my work as I'm doing it so that I can present it. Um, there's a tenon here and a tenon there. So this piece had to be mounted into the bottom of the rail before the leg was put on. Solved the problem. Okay? And we did that uh, six times. Once each on each of the back legs and then twice on each of the front legs. Um, and so that, that uh, how they're put on, it kind of dictates the way you're gonna assemble the piece when you glue it together. This is still just dry assembled. When you do mortise and tenon and dovetails when you're assembling, you don't even have to clamp it, you just put it together and it stays there. Okay, with the joinery uh, done, we move on to the inlay of the legs. And in this book is a picture of the, of the leg that I was interested in copying. And although this photograph is not full size, what I did was I knew the leg was an inch and three eighths. So I, I uh, made sure that when I copied this, I kept copying it until I got it to the right size. So it was 200% is what I had to blow it up. And then I, I got a piece of plastic, this piece of plastic here, overlaid this, and with a marking pen, just marked the location of each one of the bell flowers. And then uh, I took that and laid it on the leg, and with an awl, or an ice pick, or whatever you want to use, I went and I marked all the points where they were going to be installed. Uh, where I was going to inlay. And so that organized, first of all, it gives me the size and it gives me the location. Now, uh, the size has to do with uh, whatever gouge you have. So in this particular case, I had to get a gouge that would match the curvature and the length. So the curvature uh, in this particular case is a five and the length uh, vary from, I don't remember all the different sizes, um, a 5.8, a 5.13, um, and a 5.20. So those, those are the different sizes of bell flowers that I had to do on the lathe. And uh, it's all done with the gouge. You chop it with the gouge and then uh, you remove that material in between those two cut lines with your little router plane. Uh, this, all, this is also a part of the inlay set uh, if you spend a little bit more money than, than he spent on this set that he gave away tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think tonight's set was just under $400 and if you add this it goes up like 500 something. Uh, but this is a nice little router plane, it comes with three different size cutters and does a really nice job. Problem is sometimes my, my area is so small that I can't get the router plane in there and then I have to use a carving tool to clean it up. I'll demonstrate that after I get done, when I get tired of talking. Um, we also have this, this uh, uh, if I go back here, notice the, the black and the white. And uh, that was written up, uh, Robert Musty wrote that up. The Seymour's used brown, a brown and a white wood on this particular decoration. And the brown on the furniture disappeared over a period of time. If you're looking at a 200 year old piece, it's disappeared. So I decided I would use green. And so I included green in my string, I included green in my bell flowers, and I included green in the decoration that runs across the front of the, the uh, writing surface. And uh, I think that was a, a really good move. It's, it's, it's really pretty. Uh, 
uh, with the green. And uh, just a little bit of sand shading down here in the middle. Could have used a little bit more. The way I made those is I cut a white one and I cut a green one. And then I sliced them in half. But I saved the piece where I cut it out of. So I had a, a piece where I cut the piece out and I put the green and the white back in that slot because they were cut with the same size. Put a little piece of veneer tape over it and then uh, cut around the edges of it and then I was able to glue it in to the, uh, to the spot and once it dries you just clean off the veneer tape and it's, it's done. The next thing is uh, the Patera or Patera, which is the decoration that's on the upper part of the leg. In this particular case, it was a simple decoration. Uh, sometimes they do a little marquetry, and a little oval, and it'll have a design in it. In this particular case, it's all made out of string. So it's commercially string inlay that I bought. It had black and white string, and then another piece of a different kind that had kind of a, a dot and dash. And just taking all those little pieces and putting them together and then covering with a piece of veneer tape to hold them together. And then after it, and here they are down here in the bottom. If you look down here, this is one end of it. And I laid it on there and cut around it with a knife and then removed it and then used the knife, cut it even deeper. So I'm down pretty close to a sixteenth of an inch. And then used the rubber plane with a different type of blade in it, nice flat blade about a quarter of an inch wide. Uh, to take it down, get that surface nice and flat, and then uh, go ahead and, and, and glue this uh, this piece right here, and glue that right in. Once the glue dries, you take the veneer tape off the front, and you end up with this. Um, and it's it's all handwork, but it goes real quick. It's you know you don't have to plug anything in, you don't have to clean up anything. It's, it's just great. No sawdust, no noise. I laid out the, uh, the leg and, and the front part of the, the piece on uh, my, my uh, old toolbox and I wanted to uh, do the, the cut for this particular piece of string that's going to wrap all the way around, all the way around the waist. And uh, so I had to make those cuts. So I, I dry assembled it again and made those cuts, make sure it all fit. And then uh, what we do, we got, we got the base almost done in this particular, at this point. And I, I wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about just about the spade foot in just a minute, but I want to talk about finishing real quick. So did you have to cut the string because you had to put the, drive the, the leg on to the piece so that the tenons would go in to cut the string as well? So the string goes on last, after it's all put together. But I needed to have, I needed to have all my grooves all cut done before I assemble the piece because I like to finish all the pieces before I assemble them. It's best to finish all the pieces of your project before you assemble it if you can. You can get a much better product and especially if you're finishing by hand. If, if you're a spray person uh, then go ahead spray everything. But, uh, it's pretty hard to get down in these little corners and, and have it look nice. Um, so this has got a couple coats of shellac on it. Uh, and it's a little bit further along than, than the presentation. But uh, it has the, 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 the lopers in it, and that's cherry. The loper is made out of cherry. This, this loper over here, you can just barely see a little white spot there. That's the pin that goes through the loper that prevents it from pulling out. It stops it where you want it to stop it. So you have to decide where you want it to stop. On this one here, I wanted it to stop right at the edge of the writing surface. So something else that you have to calculate. And uh, the primary reason for putting this slide up is I wanted to, whoops, the way ahead it. I wanted to uh, talk about this little decoration here. It's a, it's a little uh, bead that runs around the ankle, just above the ankle of the leg. And uh, um, that was kind of an interesting piece. It took a little bit of finagling to do it right, but it established where I wanted it. I cut it with a knife. Uh, then I needed to remove 
the, the stock where the bead is going to be inlaid. And I had uh, varying surfaces here. That I had no way to, to register my rotor, rotor to move that material. Uh, thought about it a little bit and, and decided uh, what I needed to do was to raise this up to this level right here so it would be nice straight across. So I just take the piece of wood on there. And uh, using the rubber plane again, I cut it across. And I put tape on, on the tape on this one here so I wouldn't mark it. Just protect it because it, it's, it's pretty clean and uh, pretty much close to being finished. Uh, we'll continue on. I've, I've removed the stock all the way around and then I have what is called a miter jack and you've probably seen it at the fair and probably wondered what the heck is that. Um, it's an old-fashioned tool that sets on a bench. It's about this long and uh, uh, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm shaving uh, the 45 on the end of that little piece that's going to be inlaid. And I made that little piece using uh, this molding plane and I have the molding plane sitting on a piece of stock where, where I plowed out the bead. This, this little bead that you see in the bottom here, that's from the molding plane. The rest of it I just cut it out of the board. And then I have a strip that I could inlay a piece around the leg. Uh, another picture of, of the uh, miter jack. Here you can see a, a, a threaded screw it moves this jaw back and forth. It squeezes stuff up against this jaw. This is an exact 45 degree angle. And this is uh, a uh, coffin plane that you use. And it's a little bit longer than a normal uh, plane. And, and it gives you that nice shave, perfect 45 every time. You don't have to bother trying to cut it with a saw or anything. And there's the piece. Um, I've cut the 45. I haven't got it lined up yet because that needs to line up right on the corner. And then we'll, we'll make it wrap all the way around. 